Okay, now we're back at the slides. And as mentioned earlier, unfortunately, VirtualBox does not have advanced networking features found in VMware, and it requires more work to make virtual machines and those machines to talk to each other. And it's definitely recommended to actually use a separate hardware component, such as a real router or switch, to set up a subnet for these virtual machines. And the command prompt, or DOS command prompt, of course, you would go to folder, the folder where VirtualBox was installed and run VBox manage, one word, space, create host if, one word, space, VB underscore NIC. And now you actually would go to the control panel in Windows and under network connections, bridge it with your local area network connection. And you also need to use static IP addresses for setting up a virtual network between the VMs. And each VM should be assigned, uh, sorry, be assigned an IP address within the subnet of your current router or gateway. And it's highly recommended that you use a permanent network connection to actually get this achieved. Sure. You will actually, I'll show you real quick. You go to the control panel. Oops. Should be an icon here for networks, or I should be quick. Oh, network connections. And of course, you have your virtual bus connection. And then your regular LAN connection. Uh -huh. So you'd actually highlight both of those together and then bridge them. Oh. That's basically that's right. You had to go through this, that, and it's a. Yeah, and then from there, it's a whole lot of ugliness you got to go through afterwards. Because you got to manually set every single subnet for every VM once you get the connection made. IP addresses. Yes, because I was trying to figure this out like a few weeks ago and I went to Sun's website. When they showed me that, I was like, this will not, be, okay, I said at that point, like, you know what, if I got to set up a virtual network, I'll use VMware for that. If I got to test software, I'll use VirtualBox for that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's VirtualBox strictly, but you said it's more for applications, not really for doing true networks. Server, yeah. Yeah. Server deployment. Yeah, because I can actually connect to my home network and the internet with VirtualBox, but if I try to make virtual VMs talk to each other, it's not going to happen. And of course, we already did a quick demonstration of VirtualBox earlier in class, and it was definitely much faster than VMware. Okay, and another key advantage to having a virtual environment is that you can actually reuse and backup pre existing systems and even use ones that people have already built and made available. And in the case of my machine, it even allows a user with a dual booting computer such as a MacBook Pro that has two different operating systems to actually be able to open VMware or VirtualBox and work on their virtual machine at the same time. We already did this, and it's actually on a pre-recorded video, so I'm not going to go into the OS 10 version of VirtualBox. We did that at the beginning of this, cor this course. And of course, you also have Joomla for those of you who want to try some content management tools on your own. As you download the Joomla VM from jumpbox.com, sorry, app slash Joomla. And it's actually recommended you actually extract this file to where you installed your virtual disk for either VMware or VirtualBox. And of course, with Joomla, just like you would with the VMware, you actually will need to create a username and account with Joomla. Once you create a username, sorry, username and account with Joomla and Jumpbox, you'll be able to download the VDMK and go from there. Okay, and from here, you actually go to the directory where you actually extracted the VMDK2, and then, of course, open it and set it as your secondary and your slave hard drive, sorry, your primary hard drive and your slave hard drive. So you have two instances in there. The first one will be your boot. The second one, of course, will be your secondary or slave hard drive. And, of course, configure it as you would any other virtual machine. And, of course, Joomla only needs 256 megs of RAM because it is actually based on the server version of Ubuntu, so it's just a text-based version. And of course, Joomla is, at, uh, sorry, the guys at Joomla actually recommend that you actually take advantage of the VTX slash AMD V features within VirtualBox to give you better connection speed, and also choose host interface for network configuration, which then tells the VM to actually talk to your host machine. And from here, attach the disk just create it to the machine as well. So this is pretty much your standard stuff for any type of VMware. 
And of course, from here, you actually will boot the jump box, and you will actually will see a screen after it boots, and this actually displays the current IP address that is assigned to the jump box by the host. And then your host operating system, OS 10 or Windows for that matter, you then open up your Firefox browser, and if there, point it to the IP address that appears on the Joomla screen. And of course, you will also be taken to the Joomla web interface that actually handles the configuration for Joomla within your browser. And of course, make sure that the configurations you want are set up and then begin using Joomla. And of course, as mentioned earlier, working VMware and VirtualBox, because that's basically what it's made for. Of course, I'll end this off by saying a little bit of stuff about virtualization in general. Pretty much to be effective to get everything out of virtualized infrastructure. You need to have a proper policies and procedures in place to make sure that it does not become a giant bowl of noodles where everything's all mixed and matched together like certain DLL files and a certain OS will remain nameless. And from here, it's real easy to actually lose track of what machines you have and what they're doing, as well as running too many independent virtual machines, which can definitely degrade your performance. It should also use proper, sorry, have properly trained staff to actually plan the rollout of your VM clients. And definitely, Remember to treat your virtual machines as your enterprise assets, and whether the virtual machines are in development or production, they still have the same logical function as your physical servers, and this means making sure that software is properly updated and patched, as well as making sure that all sensitive and secret information stays secure as if it were on a physical server. And of course, backups, and definitely this is one of the biggest advantages to VMware and VirtualBox is the fact that with virtual machines, it's the ability to actually save instances on images on the fly and then copy the VMDK or VDI or VDLs if you're in VirtualBox to separate hard drives and even servers at remote locations as a means of disaster recovery. And this is actually much faster and easier than creating an image file of physical hard drives because VMware actually creates the image up front and actually updates itself as the changes are made and the same thing goes for VirtualBox instead. In other words, since you already have a file as opposed to a physical hard drive, you don't need to worry about looking at available space, compressing the data, and converting the data to the correct format image because the format image is already there as the file itself. And just let you guys know, I plan to hold do another virtualization workshop sometime in November. And unlike the previous one, such as the one tonight, this one will actually go more in depth about virtual networks rather than just the, how to set the VMs up and basis of virtualization. I'll also demonstrate how to actually use virtual networks to actually test publications and security measures. And security measures will be tested using simulated network attacks and examined using different network security tools. And there will also be a brief explanation of security tools for both Windows and Linux slash Unix environments. And please let me know via email if there's anything specifically that you want me to cover by the second week of October, because hopefully I'll be able to get a room either here or at Tech Town sometime in November to actually do the next workshop. So if you have any questions, anything you want to add to it, please let me know via email. Well, do you have access to the new uh, hypervisor from Microsoft, their VM version yet? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't played around with that yet. That? Okay. Yeah.